إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره. Indeed, our praise is due to Allah, and as such, we should praise Him, seek His help, and seek His forgiveness. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا. And we should seek refuge in Allah from the evil which is within ourselves and the evil which results from our deeds. من يهده الله فلا مضل له. Whomsoever Allah has guided, none can misguide. And whoever Allah has allowed to go astray, none can guide. And I be witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah, who is without any partners. And I be witness that Muhammad is the last messenger and slave of Allah. In this, the fifth episode, we are continuing to look at the evil empire under our general heading, the empire of deceit. That evil empire which was set up by Iblis, the head of the jinn, the evil jinn, that is, who challenged the law, claiming that he would send human beings astray from the beginning of time till the end. And he has tried. And Allah has given him the ability and given him the opportunity to misguide people. However, it's still in the end the choice of human beings, whether they accept his modes of misguidance or whether they don't. And we talked about in the earlier episodes how he focuses on the spiritual forms of deception. Shirk being number one. Drawing people into worshipping other than Allah. We talked about how that happened in the children of Adam. Long after Adam's time, down into the time of Prophet Nuh, Prophet Noah alayhi salam, may God's peace be upon him, he was able to slip among the people and encourage them to create images of human beings which they later ended up worshipping. Though when he first introduced it, he introduced it with a good idea behind it. He suggested that they made images of righteous people who had died in order to remind people of their righteousness. And that's how he operates. He uses something which seems to have in it some good but in the end, it is something evil. So he has operated in this way and in a number of other ways to try to spiritually sabotage human existence. We talked about the different places and areas in which he does operate, and we ended up at the home. And in the previous episodes, we were looking at how the home may be protected from the satanic influence based on the various advice which Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, gave us. And he gave us a lot of details as to how to protect the home. Because he was the last Prophet of Allah. There were none to come after him, so it was necessary for him to leave behind a clear methodology for purifying the home, protecting it, fortifying it from the satanic influence. The last of those that we were speaking about was Surah Al-Baqarah. The reading of Surah Al-Baqarah in the home, especially the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran, which will keep Satan away from the home for at least three days and nights. And we also talked about remembering Allah, Adhkar. And there are many of them that we can say, where we remember Allah and praise Him. Like the last form that we mentioned, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, 
There is no God but Allah who is alone without partner. له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. The dominion and praise are His, and He's able to do all things. Repeating this a hundred times in the home, not repeating it just ritualistically, but repeating it with reflection. This is where it has the impact. Reflecting on the fact that there is no god but Allah, no god worthy of human worship but Allah. So in our homes, we try to pray in our homes. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, even for males, we are encouraged to pray in the mosque. The best prayer outside of the obligatory prayer is the prayer a man does in his home. Prayer being one of the best ways to remember Allah. It's not surprising that the Prophet ﷺ put great stress on praying in the home. The Prophet ﷺ then went on to say, the dominion and praise are his, recognizing that whatever one has in one ho one's home, whatever possessions one has, it belongs to Allah. It all is from Allah. It's a gift and a test. How do we use it? How do we use this home of ours as a means of serving God? Or is there a means of rebelling against God? And he should be praised, thanked for all that he has given us. But people usually spend their time complaining. Why is it like this? Why is it not like that? Why didn't I have this? Why didn't I have that? It's not fair. So we end up focusing on other people, what they have. And when we do that, we become ungrateful to Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ said, we should say, له الملك وله الحمد 100 times a day. All dominion belongs to him, whatever we have was given by him, وله الحمد. And he deserves all of our praise and thanks. وهو على كل شيء قدير, and he's able to do all things. Reminding us there in the home, as we repeat this form of supplication, of remembrance of God, Allah is able to do all things. Many of us forget this. As we get ourselves caught up into haram things, forbidden things, thinking that there is no way but to do these things. But reality is that no. Allah will provide another way. As the Prophet ﷺ had said, من ترك شيئا لله أوضه الله خيرا منه Whoever gives up something for the sake of Allah, Allah rewards him with what is better. And Allah said in the Quran, من يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا ويرزقه من حيث لا يحتسب Whoever fears Allah, fears the displeasure of Allah, Allah will find a way out for him and will provide for him from where he least expected it. That is the promise of Allah. So by us saying, he's able to do all things a hundred times a day, reflecting on it. Allah is able to find a way for us. Allah is able to provide a way for us. There's no need for us to fall into evil and into sin. This will help us in our homes as well as outside of our homes. The next form of purification or fortification of the home is at the time of sleep. When one goes to sleep, Prophet Sallallahu had said, when you're about to sleep, recite Ayatul Kursi, verse 255 of Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran. Recite it completely, and there will remain over you a protection from Allah, and no devil will come near you until the dawn. What more could we ask for? Protection from the satanic influence in the night, in sleep. When we are at our weakest, when we can easily be influenced, beyond our control, we're not conscious. Also, the Prophet ﷺ had said regarding a person who was lying down for sleep, or it is said that whenever he used to lay down to sleep, he would say, Bismillahi wa da'atu jambi, Allahumma ghfir li dhambi, wakhsi shaytani, wafukka rihani, wajalni 
في النبي الأعلى. Oh Allah, in your name, in the name of Allah, I lie down on my side. Oh Allah, forgive my sin and drive away my jinn. Free me from my responsibility and place me in the highest assembly. And when a person has a, has a disturbance in sleep, his sleep is disrupted, he wakes up in the middle of the night, uncomfortable, either having a satanic dream or whatever, Prophet ﷺ had said for him to say, أعوذ بكلمات الله تامات من غضبه وعقابه وشر عباده ومن همزات الشياطين وعين يحضرون I seek refuge in Allah's perfect words from his anger, his punishment, and the evil of his creatures, from the prodding of the devils and their attacks. And the Prophet ﷺ also advised that one who wakes up in the middle of the night should get up and pray. Make it a good point for himself or herself. Perform ablution, pray, and this will help to keep Satan away from the individual. With that, we're going to take a break and come back shortly thereafter to continue looking at the ways of fortifying the home. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. Prior to the break, we were looking at the various prayers which the Prophet ﷺ recommended before going to sleep, at the point of lying down for sleep, waking up in the middle of the night from sleep, and also even waking up in the morning, remembering Allah. All of them are ways and means of protecting oneself from the satanic influence. And there are also some physical things like the bells before we spoke about that should be removed from the homes. Also, any of the symbols of false religions like the cross, the Prophet ﷺ had said, or the Prophet ﷺ never left anything in his home that had a cross on it without obliterating it. He removed that from his home. So any other symbols idols of other religious beliefs, they should not be kept in the Muslim home to protect himself or herself from the satanic influence. Also there should be a removal of pictures, pictures of human beings, animals, you know, those that are painted, images, carved statues, etc. Pictures hung on the wall, even photographs hung on the wall shouldn't be done. So Prophet Muhammad advised us saying with regards to the making of pictures in the first place, surely the makers of pictures will be punished on the day of resurrection. And it will be said to them, give life to what you have created. And he also said, indeed angels do not enter homes in which there are pictures. So if we want those protecting angels, the angels of mercy to be in our home, then we have to free it of any kind of images. Likewise, the Prophet ﷺ instructed us to remove dogs from the home. Some societies, dogs live with the people of the home, sleep in the beds with them. They kiss them, they cuddle them, they make clothing even for them. You know, the dog becomes even more important than their own children. And there are how many cases every year of people who keep dogs so close to the family getting bitten, children, you know, being harmed seriously by these dogs, etc. But people still carry on with them. In Islam, not that the dogs are hated or anything, but they're kept out of the home. They may be kept outside for guard purposes, may be used for herding purposes like a sheep dog or a camel dog, or they may be used for hunting. They're okay. You use them for hunting. They bring the prey that you've shot or whatever back to you. So they have a place, but not in the home. Prophet Muhammad had said that angels do not enter homes in which there are dogs. So again, we try to keep the dogs away from our homes, as far away as possible. And also, as a means of fortifying the home, Prophet had 
instructed us in times of anger, because of course among the things that tend to happen in homes is that we get angry with each other. Members of the family, people get worked up, stressed out. But the Prophet ﷺ had said, La taqadab, don't get angry. Control yourself. Don't allow yourself to reach that state of explosive anger. Instead, he said, indeed I know some words. If you said them, this was to a man who he saw in a state of livid anger. If he said them, his feeling would go away. A'udhu billahi min ash rajim I seek refuge in Allah from the cursed Satan. So whenever one feels anger, feel oneself boiling over with anger, say, A'udhu billahi min ash rajim I seek refuge in Allah from Satan the cursed. Because Satan feeds on that anger, causes you to end up saying things you should not have said, doing things you should not have done. You regret it afterwards. So protect yourself by seeking refuge in Allah from Satan. Also, when one gets married, one should seek refuge in Allah from whatever evil may be in the female's character. He said, when any of you gets married, he should say, Oh Allah, indeed I ask you for the good within her and the good that you created as an innate part of her character. I seek refuge in you from the evil within her and the evil that you created as an innate part of her character. So this is a part of remembering even with one's bride when one comes into the home, remembering Allah seeking refuge, seeking refuge from whatever negative or evil influences may come into the home with her. And the children should also be protected. On one hand, they should be protected from prior to their birth. Prophet Muhammad had said whenever a man goes to his wife, men and women have sexual intercourse, that they should seek refuge in Allah from Satan. He said, if one of you at the time of coming to his wife says, Bismillahi Allahumma jannibna shaytana wa jannibi shaytan ma razaqtana That is, with the name of Allah, O oh Allah, keep Satan away from us and keep Satan away from whatever you have bestowed on us. Then a child is conceived by them, Satan will not harm that child. So even before the birth of the child, the Prophet ﷺ encouraged us to seek refuge in Allah from Satan so that our relationship would produce what is good. Also what that does is when a husband and wife get together, it also prevents them from doing or saying things which are inappropriate, you know, for Muslims, believers, you know, to be involved in. Because society, corrupt society around us, promotes all kinds of corruption even in the bedroom. And also children should be protected, should be kept in the home when it gets dark, when the night comes, they shouldn't be left out because it is at the time of night that the satanic forces become most active. So the Prophet ﷺ had said, you know, bring your children into the home when the sun sets. With the setting of the sun, Satan, satanic forces become active, so we bring them in for their protection. And finally, what we can say is that the Prophet ﷺ used to seek refuge in protecting the family in general from jealousy and harmful animals. It is mentioned that he would gather his children in the morning and in the evening and gently wipe their heads and say the following supplication. I seek refuge for you with Allah's perfect words from every devil, poisonous animal, and evil eye. So it is recommended for us to gather our children and in the morning and the evening to wipe their heads and to make this supplication. It is a reminder and at the same time it is a protector. And with that, we come to the end of the main means of protecting the home from the satanic influence. As we said before, the home is the building block of the society. If the satanic forces take over the home, 
then the foundation of the society starts to fall apart. And this is what has happened in many places or in most places today. You know, Muslim homes are homes in which Satan has a good time. Whether they're eating and what they're eating and how they're eating, indulging, listening to music, etc., etc. A variety of different activities going on in the homes which are completely un-Islamic. However, the person may have on the wall Surah Al-Fatiha, or they may have on the wall Ayatul Kursi, or they may have on the wall Qul Wallahu Ahad, chapters from the Quran, or verses from the Quran. And they feel that that makes the home Islamic and is protecting the home. But in reality, it doesn't. It is a recitation of these verses and reflection on their meanings when a person applies it in their homes, that actually protects them. It is not the ritualistic placing of objects in the home, because that has no power in and of itself. It is our belief, our understanding, and our acting in accordance with the teachings of the Prophet, which protects the homes ultimately from the satanic influence. With that, I will close out the program asking that Allah protects our homes, protects the homes of each and every one of us from the satanic influence and protects our children and our wives and our husbands, protects them from bringing in satanic influences into the home and protects them from satanic influences outside of the home. And with that, I close this portion of our series regarding the protection of the home. In the coming series, we're going to look at some of the weapons of Satan in, Satan in general and how they may affect us. We should be conscious of the weapons of Satan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.